بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد as we mentioned on countless occasions in our other lectures about fiqh is the importance of tahara of purification and to purify ourselves from junub from being from sexual impurities and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us in the Quran, قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم وَنْ كُنْتُمْ جُنُبًا فَأُتَحْرُوا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us, He says, and if you are junub, meaning having those sexual impurities, then purify yourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us, and as we mentioned on countless occasions, الْأَمْرَ يُفِيدُ الْوُجُوبِ That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us something, that gives us evidence that that thing is an obligation. And purifying ourselves is what Islam calls to. And as we mentioned in the last sitting about the importance of the fitra, that this is the Muslim's natural state is that he tries to purify himself and cleanse himself. And this is a state of the believer. And this was the state of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what he called the Muslims and the believers too. Here's a beautiful hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which shows us the importance of removing janaba and that janaba, that junub, that state of... of uh, Sexual impurities does not make the Muslim impure. The Muslim is still pure. An Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu an an Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam laqiyahu fi ba'd turq al-Madinah wa hu junub qala fa an khanastu minhu fa dhahabtu fa aghtasaltu thumma jittu fa qala ayna kuntu ya Abi Huraira qala kuntu junubin fa karahtu an ujalisaka wa ana ala ghayri taharatin fa qala subhanallah inna al-mu'min la yanjis ruahu bukhari wa muslim in this hadith of Abi Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he said that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam met him on one of the different roads perhaps outside of Medina or one of the roads in Medina or outside of Medina and he was Junub. So Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu he was reporting that I met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on one of the paths to Medina or inside of Medina and I was Junub. You know I had the sexual impurities and uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, and so then uh, Abu Huraira, the narrator, said, Qal, he said, then I, uh, then I, I, I tried to, you know, I was shy and I almost tried to, I tried to hide myself from him. And then, or the uh, Abu Huraira, he hid himself from the Prophet Sallallahu and then he went and took a, uh, left and took a bath. Then he came to the uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after that. And the Prophet والسلام, said, Where were you, O Abu Huraira? And, the Pro- and Abu Huraira, رضي, رضي he said, I was Junub. And I hated to meet, sit with you, and I wasn't on Tahara. And the Prophet والسلام, responded by saying, والسلام, Subhanallah. Glory be to God. Inna al mu'min la yanjis. Verily, the believer does not become impure. He's not najis. And this is related in Bukhari and Muslim. In this hadith, there are countless benefits and we'll restrict it to just a few that Shaykh Ali Basam, rahimahullah ta'ala, that he mentioned. Some of the benefits we can gain from this hadith is that janaba is not najasa. It is not impurity. And this is because that a, a person is not created. So sperm, we're not created from najasa because what is, is born out of najasa is najas. For example, uh, bugs that are, that are uh, born out of najasa, out of filth, then they are filthy. Then we cannot eat them, we cannot you know, use them for purification or what have you. But human beings are not born from najasa. So that is one of the evidences that sperm is not najis. And this hadith is also evidence to show us that sperm uh, uh, that uh, sperm, and also janaba being in a state of sexual impurity from having sperm or uh, ejaculation, whether it be the male or the female coming uh, having uh, ejaculation, that, that is not najasa. Another benefit we gain from this hadith is that a human being be that to he is not najis. Meaning a, a human being in and of his or herself is not najasa. So even if a disbeliever is dead, or even a, a Muslim, 
Muslim or non-Muslim, they're not najasa. You can shake hands with a, a non-Muslim or, or a Muslim and they're not najasa. So this lets us know that this is, uh, human beings are not najis. And regardless of whether they are living or dead. And this is so the najasa, uh, when we talk about the najasa of a non-Muslim, for example, this is their spiritual najasa, this is because of shirk. It's not because of they don't make a stinja like the Muslim or this or that and the other. No, it has to do with their spiritual najis, that they are spiritually impure because they worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the correct call of the ulama bi'idhnillah. The correct statement of the, the opinion from amongst the very the two calls of the ulama, two opinions of the ulama, that is the most correct, and that's what this hadith and other ahadith illustrate for us and is delil for that. Another benefit is that it is permissible to delay the ghusl min janaba. So another benefit we gain from this hadith, because the Prophet ﷺ didn't yell or didn't become upset with Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu for not making ghusl uh, immediately. So that is permissible, for example, a man and a woman, they have relations, akramakum Allah, and then after that, uh, it's not uh, an obligation that they uh, make janab, uh, uh, ghusl right away, that they take a, a bath right away. but it is best, it is afdal, it is best following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam first and foremost and he also alayhi salatu wasalam that's what he, he uh, told us in authentic hadith about uh, taking the ghusl after that it, it gives a, it may give a man or the woman extra uh, prowess to be able to have relations a second time by making uh, a ghusl. So that's another benefit of doing the ghusl. But this hadith shows us that it's permissible to delay your ghusl as long as you don't have to pray or something like this. Another benefit this hadith shows us it also illustrates for us the greatness of the people of, uh, of the righteous people, the people of knowledge, and the people, the salihin, those, those pious people. And that to sit with them in the best state. And what is the, how do we understand that from this hadith? Because Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he uh, d didn't want to sit in the gathering, sit with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he was janaba. Instead, he was fearful, he hid himself from the Prophet والسلام, and then went, went home and made ghusl, then he came to the Prophet So that shows us also from this hadith, the greatness of Ahl al-Fadl, those people who have great benefit, the people of knowledge, and the people of who are uh, righteous people. That you should try to sit with them, wear your best clothing. For example, if you're in a, ga uh, 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 a gathering of dhikr, Try to wear your, your best clothing if you're in a dars, a, a lecture, or if you are going to visit one of the scholars or visit someone who has high status, then you should try to beautify yourself. Wear your nicest perfumes or your light, nicest oils for the men and for the women. Of course, we know not to wear the perfumes out in, in public. Uh, another benefit from this hadith is another benefit that the ulama uh, abstract from this hadith or deduce from this hadith is the permissibility of seeking permission from a scholar or someone who has high status when you want to leave their gathering that you should not just get up and just come and go and free like this but rather you should out of righteousness and out of uh, piety you should seek permission to leave them leave their gathering and also perhaps even to sit in their gatherings and this is what Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, illustrate for us. And that showed that his, his, his excellent manners. Those are some of the uh, benefits we gain from this hadith. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.